Well, welcome to AM Business, brought to us courtesy Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Now, the month of March marks exactly a year since Ghana recorded, recorded its first imported cases of COVID-19. In the span of these months, the business community and all aspects of the economy have suffered uh, some disruptions leading to over 40,000 job losses. In today's edition of AM Business, Charles Aite chronicles the events as he shares his experience reporting on the ground. The lockdown restrictions wasn't just situated here in Ghana. We had the entire globe closing their borders to neighboring countries. What this meant was that the value chain of production lines had to be disrupted. And subsequently, the manufacturing firms and in industries in that regard had to now get most of their raw materials from borderlands that are hitherto not functioning any longer. What this meant was that the value chains were being disrupted, jobs were at hand, and production lines were at stake. Everyone resident in these areas must stay at home for the next two weeks. However, if you must go out, it must only be to get essential items such as food, medicine, water, undertake banking transactions, or to use public toilet facilities. As business people, we were taking cue from what was happening in other countries that had already been hit by COVID-19. Yes, um, 2020 was a bit very rough for us, starting from when we started recording, human interaction started reducing, purchasing power of people started reducing. And the highest hit was a point where we had a two weeks uh, uh, lockdown. You see, some of the businesses we ran that are day-to-day -day businesses actually got hit a lot, especially when areas like Greater Accra, Greater Ashanti region had to go in lockdown for two weeks mm. and then it stole a lot of things car stop moving so yes businesses especially from all the sectors even the agreed that we felt that really did well was having issues because a lot of things were changing Of course, the Ghana Statistical Service gave us a clear picture of what exactly happened in the span of these months. We're talking close to 25% of Ghana's workforce having to be laid off, having their salaries slashed, or even that of being fulled. This was a dire situation in Ghana's workforce of which business owners, the manufacturing firms, had no clue how to come out of. Clearly, one of the major issues that led to closures of businesses was the partial lockdown in Greater Accra and Greater Kumasi, and indeed some pockets of the central region. Once we had partial lockdown, what that meant was that businesses naturally in these areas had to close down. Indeed, they had to close down involuntarily. The tracker also reveals that more than 45,000 workers have lost their jobs during the partial lockdown, with those in accommodation and food sector badly hit. So far, more than half a million workers have also had their wages reduced. The accommodation and food subsector recorded the highest draft in sales. So although our, our bars mask the effect of the accommodation and food subsector, indeed the accommodation and food subsector recorded the highest de decline in sales to the tune of 57%. In the wake of the job losses arose matters regarding you know, employer-employee relations. It became so murky. We had various bouts of employer agitations across specific pub, uh, public and even private sector uh, environs of which I was very interested in getting in touch with the Institute of Human Resource, the president for example, who also doubles as the head of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, Dr. Edward Quapon. My question to him back then was how best we could neutralize the effects of COVID-19 on employee-employer relations. We know that 
some companies have, 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 have closed down, they have declared redundancies, they have reduced salaries, but in the public service, the government has been so gracious that we still pay. We, nobody has suffered any salary cut as far as we are concerned. Of course, line managers will try to control cost in terms of the, the activity-driven uh, costs. But uh, yes, we, we, we are aware of this, but we are not, we are guided by a principle, the golden principle, that we shouldn't let make workers worse off. So we will not make them worse off. We will try to stay afloat and pay what we are supposed to pay. Even though government is suffering, you know, bleeding from that, I think uh, governments have a duty to provide jobs and to keep uh, those who have jobs uh, in their jobs. So yes, it is endemic, it, has, it is having a toll on government, but we will not, I think, uh, low ball or whatever we are paying now. Going up might be difficult though. Oh, boy. impact of COVID-19 was a whole chain, you know, of gravity. One aspect of the Ghanaian economy that felt it so much harder was the aviation industry. Because mind you, we're talking about travel lines, we're talking of investment flows through the airspace. And it was interesting to know, visiting the Kutaka International Airport, having to see empty runways, empty halls, and the fact that even those who were traveling had to be essential travels back then. The Kotoka International Airport was virtually shut down and of which the then aviation minister uh, Joseph Kofi Ada explained to us the extent to which damage had been caused the aviation sector not just in Ghana but the entire West African aviation space. The airports in Ghana, particularly the International Airport, uh, Kotoka International Airport has also been shut down and this has adversely impacted on all of the players in the aviation sector. The main operators, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority and the revenue that it gets, the Ghana Airport Company, the operator of the airport, and then all the affiliated uh, agencies, whether they're subcontractors, they're service providers, uh, such as cleaning companies or security operators or uh, hospitality related uh, operators such as those driving uh, cars and carrying uh, travel, uh, travelers from hotels to airports, airport to hotels, all those people in the value chain of aviation have, have been adversely affected, which means that the revenues have gone down, which means that the employment is, is at risk, some of them have lost their jobs. Uh, it, it's taken a toll on us and our government, of course. It wasn't all about the doom and job losses because we do know that COVID-19 op also opened a space for the tech pioneers, those into fintech, to explore their potential within this margin. In a spate of just a year, interacting with most of these tech pioneers made me understand the fact that their profit margins had increased by a hundred percent fold, even beyond that. It tells us the extent to which the going digital under COVID-19 was essential for the survival of businesses and as well the expansion of the Ghanaian economy. Hi, my name is Henry Kobler. Um, I'm a computer engineer by profession and I run a tech company called ISO Africa. Um, I think that the tech industry is thriving. It's, it's becoming better off in terms of how we, we bring in um, solutions into the market. Um, I think that from our and we've, we've been successful at um, getting across some countries and even providing these solutions to people. Um, looking at the numbers, it's always getting on the rise and we're excited about it. But I think that COVID coming in um, sort of just gives us a bit of distraction. And um, I think that for us, it's also a good thing for us to, to look at um, a brighter side of, of what we're doing because it opens a lot of avenues for us to explore.
It has been a bittersweet experience for Ghana's business community, both on the sides of employers as well as workers. Because even though we had cases of job losses, it bestowed on workers and employers as well the burden of having to be innovative and cautious of the trends amid COVID-19. But now we have vaccines and now we have government stimulus and now we have the 2021 budget which is geared towards economic recovery. The question to the minds of most businesses is how do we harness the potential of the post-COVID-19 economy in Ghana? For most of them, this doesn't just remain a challenge but also a responsibility. I'm Charles IIT for Joy Business. And it's covered a year on Charles I T narrating for us uh, things that we did certainly experience. Business on the AM show every Wednesday is brought to us by EcoBank, the Pan African Bank. And Charles also made mention of the 2021 budget geared towards economic recovery. Well, on AM Talk, uh, we continue with that debates by parliament minority is vowing to reject uh, that statement if government fails to accurately state the country's fiscal deficit we will continue with this conversation with richard Echampong, who is member of parliament for bia east member of the finance committee and john kuma his member of parliament for Ejusso. also joining the conversation is dr rashid Draman, executive director african center for parliamentary affairs benjamin akako We'll continue that conversation up next year on the AM Show.